All right, thanks for joining us. My name is Kate Sawicki. I work in alumni and family relations here at Rhode Island School of Design as the um, Officer for Lifelong Learning. Joining me today are Molly and Katerina from Onward Travel, who will be hosting our info session on the RISD design tour in Iceland, taking place in uh, late spring of 2023. And so I will go ahead and pass off to Molly and Katerina to introduce themselves and get us started. Just as a friendly reminder, folks, this um, meeting is being recorded and it will be posted. And so if you want to keep your camera and yourself muted, that's great. If you don't mind being on camera, that's fine. You can put any questions that you have in the chat um, and we will answer those all at the end. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Um, we are really excited to be working with RISD. Uh, my name is Molly Christ. I'm based in upstate New York and I run Onward Travel with my sister Kat, who's based in Philadelphia. Um, we just a tiny bit of background is that we um, grew up at, on a farm with a cooking school where our mom would do host culinary tours every year to Europe and around the United States. So we grew up with a real love of travel. And then what we did is we started planning small group tours in partnership with businesses and organizations, universities, um, cooking schools, restaurants, all kinds of groups for their networks, um, like their alumni network in this case. Um, our first ever tour was in the spring of 2013 and we went to Iceland and we've returned every year um, at least once or twice because we just love it and all of our travelers absolutely love it too. So we're really excited to share Iceland with RISD. Um, it is a really special place, especially when seen with a design uh, lens. So um, the tour will take place April 30th to May 7th. We'll be based in Reykjavik the entire time. Um, there's a lot of logistics that we're happy to assist you with on uh, the website, which is linked on the last slide, and, and you probably have that information as well, is the detailed itinerary for the tour. So we didn't, uh, Kat and I didn't wanna just read through the entire itinerary to you. Um, what we wanted to do instead was just to highlight some things that make the tour really special. And so we're gonna go through just eight different things that uh, we're particularly happy about with this tour and think you'll really enjoy. So um, I'll pass it over to Kat to start with our first highlight. Well, our first highlight is something that actually surprised me the first time I ever went to Iceland, and that is experiencing geothermal energy. It Once you learn about geothermal energy, so many things in Iceland make a lot of sense. And so that's why we like to highlight it on our tours. We will visit the Hellas Haiti power plant uh, to learn about how geothermal energy works. And then you'll just start seeing it all around you, um, including one of my personal favorites, which is the hot pools, the geothermal powered soaking baths, basically. Um, here you see uh, our friend Rich from AIGA at the Blue Lagoon. Of course, the Blue Lagoon is really famous, but we'll take you to some other lesser known um, hot pools too. And um, if the weather's cold and you see doors open in the middle of town, uh, it kind of makes your head spin when you grew up in an old farmhouse like I did. But when you understand geothermal energy, it all makes sense because it's very cheap, very renewable, makes the country tick. It's wonderful to experience. Great. Okay, our next slide. Uh, so another place that we'll visit on our tour a couple of times is Harpa. Um, Harpa is a landmark building. It's very iconic, very beautiful. It's located on the harbor in Reykjavik, and it's a concert venue and event center. It has a glass facade with a kaleidoscope type pattern that gives kaleidoscope reflections inside the building. I included a photo here of a travel group inside of Harpa posing, but I definitely Google image Harpa to see pictures of the exterior because it's beautiful. It was designed by the Danish Icelandic artist, Olafur Eliasson, and uh, the Icelandic people are really proud of this beautiful building. They're also a really extremely creative population. There's around 380,000 Icelanders, so it's a small population, but there's a huge amount of talent. So they can support this kind of world-class music venue 
because they're so um, so musical and so talented. They have a few different sizes of um, rooms inside of Harpa to accommodate different sizes of events. And during the Design March conference, you'll actually go to a presentation, a, a big um, talk inside of Harpa, which we'll talk about a little more in a minute. But we'll take a private tour of Harpa. The tour guides are all artists themselves. And if we're lucky, they'll perform for us. That's always happened, but you know, we can't guarantee, but we'll try to charm them so they sing for us. And then you get to hear the acoustics and look at the landscape and this beautiful architectural marvel. And it's it's very special. Okay, the next slide. This is Alexander Zaklinski, who reached out to us when he heard we were doing this tour. And he's a fascinating guy. He's an Icelandic, Ukrainian descent, American born artist, born in Rhode Island, lived in New York for a long time, a RISD alum. And then he moved to Iceland in 2005. His mom was born in Iceland. And um, he's really involved in a lot of just very interesting um, avant-garde progressive art projects. Right now, he is um, organizing a fundraiser, Artists for Ukraine, which here you can see the website. I encourage you to check it out. Uh, when we spoke with him the other day, he was in the Carpathian Mountains in the Northwest part of Ukraine visiting family. Um, very, very interesting guy. And along those lines, also, like Molly said, we've been going to Iceland and often with a design focused tour since 2013. So we have a lot of friends there, a lot of actual real people that will be happy to see us again, very happy to meet our group that we'll be engaging with um, designers, creatives, etc. So there's a lot of local connection. And um, we look forward to seeing Alexander there in, in um, Iceland when we're there with our group. Next slide, please. Yeah, and Alexander is also looking forward to helping connect the group with some of his work. Uh, he mentioned he's organizing art workshops with Ukrainian ref refugees that are in Iceland. He's also organizing film showings. He's a sculptor um, with a sculpture studio right in the center of Iceland. So we'll kind of see what's going on at the time of our visit, but he'll have some interesting things to connect the group to, which is perfect. And a huge part of why these tours are exciting because it's not the experience we create through, especially these art focused tours in Iceland are not the same experiences you could have if you went to Iceland on your own. We try to create a greater depth of experience and we do that through the alumni connection and also through like the synergy that comes together when people with shared background and shared interests are traveling together. And then also like Kat was mentioning kind of our depth of experience in Iceland with different contexts. So um, anyway, we will be in Iceland um, based right in the center of Reykjavik. And we love to stay at one hotel because we're, we're seeing and doing a lot of things, but it's a small country and you can see quite a bit without having to move hotels. And it does make it just a, a pretty comfortable way to travel and to really immerse yourself in all that's going on when you're not moving from place A to B to C. So um, we're offering two lodging options for this tour. There is Hotel Alda, which is a boutique hotel. The photo pictured there is a room at Hotel Alda. Um, some of the rooms you can walk out to uh, like a roof balcony with a nice view. Um, not all the rooms, but they're all comfortable. It's newly renovated. They have a great breakfast. They have a barber shop on the first floor. So it's kind of mixed for like a funky ambiance. Um, if you want to have your hair done, men or women, I learned last year, you have to book that like well in advance because they're just booked full, which is, which was kind of funny. And that was in November, quite a quiet time in Iceland. Um, so anyway, it's a, it's a really nice location and it's a really comfortable hotel just down the street from there, uh, towards Harpa, towards the Harbor is, uh, Kex hostel. And we have, um, had group stay at Kex before. And what we've booked there are um, like four bedroom dorms. So you'd be sharing with possibly people on the tour, possibly not. But if you want to come and you want to save a few bucks, that's a really good option. It They have a nice breakfast there as well. It's a really cool hostel. Um, they have a bar and social area on the first floor which is um, also like a micro brew destination. So they have really good beers on tap and it's just a, a 
great place. That's not your typical hostel. Um, so yeah, we definitely recommend both lodging options. We like both of them a lot. And you can ask us any questions that you have when you're choosing which lodging would work best for you. And then the okay, next one. So yeah. the next thing we want to talk about is what takes us to Iceland in May, design March. Uh, after the pandemic, they started making the festival in May. The first year was the first year they were back was last year. And they did it in May instead of March. It was always in March, design March, right? Um, but then everyone liked having it in May. And so they're doing it in May again this year. Um, so but that's why it's called Design March. And it's wonderful. The entire city um, is full of just little design exhibitions and the different boutiques and shops. There will often be something small set up. Then there's also larger and more immersive workshops and programs throughout the city. And of course, at Harpa, there's one day called Design Talks, which is just wonderful. And they get some really big names in design. Um, Oh, of course. Now I can't. Well, Calvin think. Klein spoke. Uh, yeah, the first Calvin year Klein I was there with. once. <laughs> Jessica <laughs> Walsh. Jessica Walsh, yeah. Um, and some other just really huge, famous designers like that. And th this, I have an interest in design, but I'm not a designer. And design talks over the years has completely blown my mind. It's so cool. And it's amazing to see all of the different things that fall under the umbrella of design. A lot of this is just problem solving. Um, looking at urban design. Of course, there's also like product and textile and graphic designers that are represented, but there's a lot of just really, really interesting thinkers that present during that day. It's a wonderful day. All of the designers and creatives from all over Iceland are there wearing their coolest clothes and the vibe is amazing. It's so much fun. So I look forward to that immensely. And that will be really, I'm sure the highlight of our Design March experience, but we will also definitely go to some workshops and parties and there's some really fun parties if you're up for partying all night with the Icelanders, um, cause that's what they do. And uh, yeah, it's just a really, really fun, jubilant vibe and experience. And um, we really look forward to it. The second half of our trip will be more focused on Design March. The first half of the week is more focused on some of the um, natural tourism and geothermal energy, which Molly will talk about now. Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, a lot of a lot, the landscape in Iceland is a place where the Icelanders and travelers, but definitely the Icelanders get a lot of their inspiration and a lot of their design inspiration. Um, Golden Circle is a route that uh, you drive to see some amazing things. So we would never go to Iceland without taking the Golden Circle, but we don't do it on like a coach bus with 50 of your best friends. We have really good guides, small bus, and some unique places to visit. So we're going to visit the places that are uh, like the required places that you have to go when you're in Iceland, but then we'll get off the beaten path as well. Um, one of the destinations, which is pictured here, is Thinglevir National Park. The national park is in a valley that's caused by the separation of the tectonic plates. So it's likely unlike anything that you've seen before, and it is really stunning. Um, so we'll take a little walk, a little hike there. The bus will drop us off in one spot, pick us up in the in another, and we'll get to experience that. Um, we'll also see Golfos Waterfall, which is stunning, and Geyser, which is where all geysers got their name from this geyser in the Golden Circle. Um, we'll also have a nice lunch and find a beautiful lagoon to soak in and have cocktails in while we are out there. So yeah, it's a... Uh, really stunning day no matter the weather if you have to bundle up fine if it's beautiful fine the landscape just shines no matter what's going on it's it's really really cool oops and then Kat will talk about her favorite topic next one of my favorites um okay so like I mentioned earlier I was really amazed when I learned about geothermal energy about how fascinating that was I was also really amazed the first time I went to Iceland by the food, the food is so good. And when you think about Iceland, you probably are not expecting that you're not thinking about the food. And then or, well, if you're me, you are thinking about the food, but probably not expecting much. Um, but the food in Iceland is 
amazing. I look forward to like every meal we have scheduled. We go to some really, really nice restaurants. Um, we have, you can see in these pictures, a cocktail party that we did, but then in the middle, that's a grilled fish kebab from this one little like hut we go to in the Harbor where we have lobster soup and grilled fish and gull that's Icelandic beer. It's an excellent lunch. Um, and then on the right, that's this like unbelievable sashimi and mussels and shrimp that we get on our last night at Cole restaurant. It comes out like on dry ice. It's just, if you like seafood, an unbelievable treat. If you don't like seafood or you're vegetarian or you're gluten-free, um, they're also really like the most progressive country on the planet. And so not only will you be satisfied, whatever you're eating will be extraordinarily delicious as well. Um, they're the geothermal energy comes back in to play here because they have greenhouse networks throughout the country that are just powered by geothermal. So they have maybe not the hugest selection of fresh produce all the time, but what they have is always like amazingly fresh because it's grown right there. It's not shipped in from some other place. It's grown there. And for the most part, I mean, I guess maybe like avocados come from somewhere else, but um, then they also have... Um, really good lamb and really good seafood. Um, it's great. Spirit. And more Spirit. of like a new European style of cuisine. Everything is always beautiful as well as delicious. Uh, there's a lot of design inspiration in the flatware, in the plates and the presentation. You will love, love, love eating in Iceland. And we have definitely over the years figured out where to go. We look forward to taking you to those places. Definitely. And then our last highlight is just the aspect of visiting Iceland logistically. Um, it seems like a pretty far flung destination, but it's only five or six hours from the East Coast, kind of depending on which direct, which way you're crossing the Atlantic, the tailwinds. Um, a nonstop flight from New York is usually less than $600, including your bag and your seat. So it's really accessible. And Iceland Air offers nonstop flights from many cities across the country. So um, Kat and I are always helping our travelers book flights and plan out their visit. And we can definitely do that for anyone um, if you'd like our assistance. But you'll see if you're coming from Seattle or Chicago, or even many cities that aren't quite as big as those, there's still some good nonstop options, or at least just one connection to the East Coast, and then hop over to Iceland. So the logistics of visiting Iceland are very, very nice. Um, and that's something that we like about it. And you arrive really early in the morning on your arrival day, because it's such a short flight. So you're usually leaving the East Coast around dinner time. So it's like 6am, 5am in Iceland when you arrive. And then when you depart, you depart around 5 p.m. in Iceland, which gets you home around 5, 6 p.m. at home uh, once you get those hours back. So it's quite nice. You get a full day on the day one and you get a full day on the last day. So even though the tour is just a week, you can really do a lot. There's not a lot of wasted travel time. Um, and then on the first day, since you get there so early, um, we pick you up and we get to experience the uh, Reykjanes Peninsula, which is where the airport, the Keflavik airport, Iceland's main airport is located. And we take you to the Blue Lagoon, which was the first photo. So you have a, a really like nice, easy day to ease into things, get a little nap before a great dinner because um, it is a long first day, but we're there to help make it really comfortable. So um, now those were kind of our eight highlights. We also encourage you to read the itinerary because it has a lot of details for every single day. Um, and so you'll really get a feel for what you're doing, but we also wanted to answer some questions. So if you have any, put them in the chat. We also have a handful of questions that we'll answer that are just frequently asked questions. So for example, can my friend or spouse uh, that's not an alumni join the tour and travel with me? And the answer is absolutely. Um, we already have some couples signed up with spouses who are not RISD alum, and that's fine. And if you're worried about that, maybe it's not quite the right tour for them. I'm a designer, but my husband's not, um, or I'm a sculptor or a writer, architect, whatever, but my spouse is not. No problem. Like Kat was saying, 
even though she's not a designer, she finds so much interest in the design conference and the design march event. Design talks is interesting to everybody. Um, you don't have to be a designer. So we welcome you to bring a traveling companion for sure. This trip will be appropriate and very fun for them. Kat, do you wanna answer a question about uh, what would be the weather? What should I expect for the weather in Iceland? That's a hard one to answer. That's why I gave it to you. Um, expect anything. Yeah. Uh, one thing that's really cool about the weather in Iceland actually once you have accepted this fact is that it just changes constantly. It, it'll be sideways rain one second and five minutes later, the sun is out. So you definitely need to bring um, a rain jacket. I'm a little put on the spot by this question because I've never been to Iceland in May, which is when we're going because Design March was always in March. And I know that in May, summer is coming much more but off the top of my head, I'm sorry. But I don't summer, No, that's fine. Summer is still going to be cool in Iceland. So it's really right. all about layers and some good gear, some, some hiking boots, but you won't need to be prepared for um, the tundra, but it can be windy. Um, so we do provide notes that we mail to travelers. And so you'll get your packing notes in the mail, which will give you an idea of things to bring. And the main key is just to be ready for anything with Icelandic weather. Yes. Um, and now a question you might wonder is how many people will be on the tour? So there will be 14, we have 14 uh, people that we can bring on the trip and then Kat hosting you for 15 people total. Um, and what is included? So on the itinerary, we try to deal to uh, detail that out, but we try to make our tours pretty all inclusive. So you'll have a few meals on your own, but um, that's about it. So most of your meals are included, all of your sightseeing, your hotel, of course, your tips, all your transportation. Uh, very little is not included. You'll want to do some shopping because Iceland has awesome shopping, really cool fashion. So um, you should save uh, some money for that. But the tour price that you see in the packet is pretty representative of your total cost, less a few meals on your own. Kat, do you want to address free time if they have free time on the tour? Yes, they do, uh, especially because we'll be right in the middle of Reykjavik. Anytime you have like a free afternoon, it's really easy to go spend it however you want. We do have a lot of organized activities during the trip, but we also like to work in enough free time so that even introverts can enjoy themselves. Um, the last half of the tour, you can see when you look at the itinerary, when we're doing design march, it's a little bit open right now. And that's because we won't get the actual activities from design march until sometimes just like a couple of weeks before that they actually send out their full schedule. Um, so what we like to do to program design march is like, obviously we have the day where we do design talks. And then besides that, there's two other days where we will, you know, all read through all of that information and look at what seems interesting, ask some of our friends that are designers there, what they've got going on, and then I'll make a sort of schedule of this is what I'm going to be doing and anyone who wants to join can come with me and this is what we'll do as a group. Anyone who wants to just explore on their own can absolutely also go do that. So that's how, kind of how we approach the conference. Um, and we always make a WhatsApp group too, which means that during free time, it's really easy to send a message and like see where everybody's at or you know if you wanted to only do part of that scheduled, um, scheduled uh, design march, you know, like what I decide to do, you can come meet us later or leave or however you want to do it. We definitely like to leave time for people to experience a place the way that they want to as well. And we think that's an important part of traveling is, mm -hmm. is being on your own a little bit. And Reykjavik is like a great town to go to, even if you can't, um, I mean, even if you're like a little nervous about traveling on your own at all, being on your own during any free time, whatever, it's like, it's a wonderful town, easy to get around. You will love it. Yes. And that also um, makes me think of one more question, which is that if you're a solo traveler, no problem. It's a really good trip. All of, I mean, not to like toot the Almer Travel Horn, but all of our tours are totally great for people that are solo. Um, we're a small group, so everyone gets to know each other. And we always have solo travelers, couples, friends. Um, there's always a mix. And so if you're a solo traveler, you're very welcome and you'll feel very comfortable and um, you'll kind of mix and mingle with the group. And it's a 
really nice way actually for someone who's a solo traveler to get to experience awesome. Iceland. Um, Susan makes a great point in the chat, which is, yeah, if you need a good coat, buy it in Iceland if you're in the market for something like that, because they have great, uh, beautiful and functional high quality rain gear. And that is very true. So uh, my favorite fleece jacket is from Iceland. They have a couple brands, two brands in particular that are kind of like their Patagonia and they're really nice. And then you don't have the same uh, maybe Patagonia jacket that everyone has. Yes. And then kind of cool from Iceland from 45 North. Um, so yeah, that's a really good tip. And if you also, if you were surprised by something weather-wise when you were there, you could you could know that your hotel is just down the street from some places to buy some of the best gear you can get like in the world. So don't worry, they have great selection. It's not cheap though. Yeah, it's not cheap. <laughs> <laughs> and well, you, you get what for... you pay for. It is amazing yeah. stuff there. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, we are really excited about this trip and we welcome anyone to contact either Kat or myself, Molly, with any questions. Um, we will be looking forward to going to Iceland next May and hope that some of those of you who tuned in are joining us. But yeah, just get in touch. If you have questions, comments, uh, check out the itinerary and um, we hope to hear from you. Thanks so much, Molly and Kat, for going over everything. The trip sounds incredible. And we're just so excited for you both to be leading this um, for us. We will post this recording um, online for folks to check out in the future. So if you end up talking to somebody who's really interested in the trip and they've got questions, feel free to send them to check this out first. But obviously, like Molly and Kat have said, they're available to answer questions as well. Or I am always happy to forward questions along to them. So you can email us at our general alumni account, or you can contact me. Again, my name is Kate Sawicki um, directly, and we're happy to get those questions to the right place. Um, but I don't see any other questions in the chat, so we're going to go ahead and end the meeting. And just thanks again for everybody for joining us, but especially to Molly and Kat for planning such an incredible itinerary for um, alums to join us, alums and family and friends and spouses um, to join on an incredible trip. So thank you all. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Kate. Have a good day, everybody. Bye.